Greetings. I thought I would just jump on here real quick and do a video response to Ravenflower's 2017 witchy tag, the 17 witchy questions that she posted about two weeks ago here on YouTube. I thought the uh, questions were rather interesting. And as I started to read the questions, I surprised even myself, I think, with the answers that I had to give once I thought about it. For instance, number one is, when times get tough, do you fight or take flight? Well, you know, I've, I've got a pretty sharp tongue. <laughs> and I've got into some, some altercations with people in my past, I have to say. And so I think a lot of people might, might think that um, <laughs> Betty White is having a little sharp tongue with the kittens. Betty White, that's enough. Cut it out. Be nice. Um... A lot of people would think that I'm a fighter. Well, I think, you know, I'm not. I, I'm more likely to take flight. Um, as an empath, I think I'm really sensitive to things before they might happen. And so I probably, a lot of times, nine times out of ten, will try to get out of harm's way before anything goes on. Or if there's any indication. A lot of times, I might even feel that there's a problem when there, people don't even know there's a problem. And I sort of avoid it. I also tend to sort of go into myself... Um, you know, get a little quiet when I'm, I'm at, upset or sad, unless you're somebody who's very, very close to me that I would confide in. So most of the times I think I take flight. Okay, number two, is there a certain color you connect with? Well, I thought this was interesting because, you know, I, I my first impression would be that I like, like all colors or most colors. I love a lot of color. I'm artistic, so I really do like um, color. Uh, but I've sort of felt in my last last 10 years or so that I sort of see things green, through green eyes. You know, I have green eyes, and that shouldn't matter. But I sort of have a feeling that I sort of see green a little easier than I see other colors, if that makes any sense. Um, I feel really comfortable looking at green. I, I, I just feel a sense of... Um, uh, kindredness with green um, for some reason. I like all colors. I particularly like muted colors. I used to call these pukey colors with my children. When we made Easter eggs, I didn't like the bright, bright red or the bright orange. I like the dirty, muddy color or I like to make gray or, you know, browns or <laughs> really funny blue, gray, brown. And, you know, more like color that would be more natural, like if you were going to die with natural fibers, you get these sometimes, some of these, yeah, sort of a uh, muted shades. Those are pretty much what I like. I, even though I like vivid colors, the shade is a little muted, containing a lot of browns or gray undertones or whatever. Um, I used to really prefer to wear black, and I used to wear black all the time. Half of my, half of my closet was black, and then I realized that I, as I get older, I started to wear more color. Because they think I was starting to fade away, and when I'm wearing black, you really, when you're older particularly, people don't notice you to begin with. And so, I think we have a tendency to want to wear more color so that maybe we're noticed. I don't know. Or maybe it looks good, you know, with our face washed out and our hair is washed out. We look all gray, so we want to wear, wear some kind of a color to uh, brighten ourselves up a little bit, maybe. Anyway, it's really fun to wear bright colors now. I think I would have been more self-conscious to wear really bright colors when I was younger because I wasn't a cutie or anything. I was always trying to blend in a little bit. Okay. Number three. What is your sun, moon, and rising? Here we're talking about the primal triad, the big three in astrology, the essence of absolute who you are. Um, I love this question. I love to hear what other people are, but I found that there's a lot of people that are confused about why we even care about it. Well, um... First of all, I have to say I'm a triple cancer. Triple cancer, yes, bingo. My sun, moon, and ascendant are all in cancer. And I also have Mercury, Venus, and Uranus in cancer, too. And yes, I said Uranus instead of Uranus. <laughs> That's what I was taught in school. And also, I'm kind of 12, and I like to say Uranus. But I, I feel silly to say Uranus. Uranus. I don't know. I feel silly. So anyway, they're in cancer. The people that had the... Now, oh, this is what I want to talk about. Now, people would, you for, a lot of people would think, if I say I'm a triple cancer, what I'm saying is I'm really, really cancer. You know, you think of somebody who has a sun sign cancer, 
you have a certain picture of what you think that person is. Maybe they're emotional or maybe they're, you know, um, whatever. <laughs> And you I love their home or whatever. And you think, oh, I'm just, I really, really am emotional. I really, really, you know, love my home or whatever. No, that's not what it means. What it means is my son, my boon, my, my um, ascendant, my rising sign, I'll be in cancer, yes, but each shows a different, a different part of me, okay? A different part of who I really am. The sun is my ego self, okay? This is what motivates me. This is my character, okay? So as, a, as someone who has a sun in cancer, yes, I tend to have my mo mo motivation tends to be emotion-based rather than energy-based. And what I mean by that is a lot of people, oh, we all have watched Jackie the Moon Mother just go, especially in her early years, she goes absolutely, would go absolutely nuts with energy. She did so many things in one day, you heard Aries energy, you didn't know how she, she accomplished it, right? Well, cancer, with a sun in cancer, is not like that. It's somebody with a sun in cancer, it's emotional. The, the basis for motivation, why I should want to do something, is emotionally based rather than I have all this energy to burn. No. I have to be emotionally attuned to something to really want to do it. I have to be emotionally invested in it to really want to do it. One way is it really came to bite me in the ass a couple of times is I was in college many, 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 many years. <laughs> sort of a tendency in our family to overeducate ourselves. And I, you know, always had deadlines and tests and papers and things due. And I had to be up to the wire to get it done. I had no motivation at all to do it. I had to have the stress. I had to have that, um, the, uh, the motivation of the stress. Oh, my God, it's due tomorrow and I haven't even looked at the book yet. That kind of thing is something that really motivates me, having my son in cancer. Okay. Also, I um, love antiquities. I love things that are old. You know, everybody who has seen any of my videos knows how much I love um, old things. I love history, um, especially some kind of studies, you know, all things. I love medieval music. I love medieval cooking. Um, so that's really part of uh, having a son in, in um, cancer. Now, what about my moon? My moon in cancer. What is that? What kind of trace does that give me? Well, this, the moon... I mean, your moon talks about your soul self, your feelings, how you would react to something. Okay, so something happening. Here, I act, I tend to act, some of the moon in Cancer tends to act a little maybe slow to react. I have a meditative mind. I keep things in my mind a long time before I react to it, usually. You know, it might not seem that way because I might look like I'm just flying off the handle or something, but I've been thinking about it for a long time. It's kind of infesting in there, right? It's kind of infesting away in there. My mind is very sensitive to impressions. Um, maybe to the point of being psychic or medium or something. Well, that's what they say. But I have a tendency, you know, to be an empath. I mean, not a tendency. I am an empath. I describe myself as an empath. And uh, this is twitched, by the way. <laughs> um, I have a tendency to be very sensitive to everything around me. And my... So that probably is very tied into the fact that my moon is in cancer. Lastly, my ascendant. My ascendant is the mask that you wear. It's, it's, my, it's my public face. Okay, this is all about my style and how I go about achieving what it is that I want. Okay, this is where it comes into play about me having this, I'm, you know, I'm social, I have strong t domestic ties, but I'm also easily influenced by people that I love or admire. But people that I really don't know, there's nothing wrong with this at all, trying to do <laughs> this video tag with, okay, now Twitch is down on this hollow in my back. He's probably going to fall asleep down there. Um, I am sometimes appear as rather cold to people I don't know. I'm a little distrustful when I do not know somebody very well, or if I really don't like somebody very well, it's hard for me to cover that up. But if somebody I really love, I admire, I'm very influenced by them. <laughs> Okay. Also have a very active imagination. This comes from the Ascendant in Cancer. Um, I love to live the past over and over again, anticipating the future. I do this. I always look. And if you listen to my videos, you probably know that this is true about me. How I'm always kind of pulling up an incident from the past. This reminds me of this kind of a situation. That's how I learn. Excuse me one minute. Get out of there. Don't eat that. Don't eat that. I'm not sure why I have the door open to the room, but I do, and I'm asking for trouble with all kinds of animals in here. 
Okay, now, um, why do we care about the Ascendant? You know, the Ascendant is probably, everybody's really tuned into the Sun sign. Well, I think the Ascendant is really, really important because the Ascendant also determines, as that is the planet, that is um, just the planet, the sign that is just coming up over the horizon when you were born, it determines the, where all of your 12 houses um, are in your horoscope. So it's very, very important. Um, it also shows your personality and how you deal with the situations and things like that, you know, which is really how people connect with us, really, on the basis of our ascendant sign. So if you don't know your ascendant sign, you really need to look at the traits of your ascendant. Okay. Number four. Too much on that subject. Sorry, I'm interested in it. <laughs> Number four. Something you could change if you could. And she says here, yourself, the world, or magically. Well, I assume what she means by magically is that she means if I could change something using magic, um, what would uh, it be? Well, I'm a little confused by that because I sort of think that that's really the idea of what we're doing with magic, right? We're doing that as, as witches, that we're trying to use our magic to change something all the time. So I'm a little kind of confused about that. Um, as far as self goes, um, when the question says, if I could change something, would I? Well, yes, you can always change things about yourself. When people say, oh, I wish I was not overweight, you can change that. You're the only person that can change it. When somebody says, I wish that I were, you know, I don't like my hair or I don't like my, uh, I don't like the fact that I'm always fighting with my sisters and brothers. You're the only person that can change that. Don't fight with them. <laughs> you know, so I think we do change things like that all the time. So that comes down in this question for me as, as the world. You know, what would I change in the world? Well, a lot of things. Oh, my. But basically, you know, just generally, general some things that I think are just wrong. I think the basis, I wish that we could go back and get, take away money out of the situation. Money, um, are, as a basis of who has what and who does what and who has power and who wants when money what somebody else has and based on money is just a mistake it's just a, it's not not ever led to anything good <laughs> that I can see um, also um, borders you know the idea of countries having borders and this land is my land and you know I, you know I'm in Pennsylvania you're in Pennsylvania now or you're in Texas or wherever you know like I had a somebody post on my wall the other day that She'd love to come and visit me, but her husband won't set foot in California. And I'm like, what are you talking about? You won't set foot in California. Like, California, what is California? It's a very diverse, very large, very diverse country. It doesn't have one identity, one kind of person, one climate, one anything. <laughs> so, um, borders, this whole emphasis on borders and, of course, walls, nonsense, nonsense. Um, and also saving the planet from man, saving the planet, saving the, you know, saving the environment, saving the earth, saving the animals, saving the, the rainforest, saving the, the oceans, saving the air, saving the bees. <laughs> um, uh, can I do it? I'm working my damnedest at it to try to participate in the change that has to happen. That's the best I can do. Okay, number five. Are you passing down your knowledge to the next generation? If so, in what way? Well, yes. Well, I think in YouTube we all are trying to. Um, I seem to talk to anybody who will listen about a lot of things. Uh, formerly, just through my children or my the youth in my family, no, not necessarily. I, I tell them what I think and what I know and any chance I get. Um, but, you know, not specifically to them. But I am writing a book. I'm working on a book which is in a way passing down some kind of knowledge. Number six, uh, Ancestor Connections, who's coming through. Well, I like this one a lot. Um, in one way, I'm continuously connected with my ancestors. Um, of course, we're talking about my faraway ancestors, you know, with my work through the, I think the dog just moved the camera. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, with my uh, history, hobby, history group um connect i feel real connection with people in uh other times um 
always have. I grew up in a, in a town where we were very connected to because um, we lived in a town that was the location of a fort, an English fort during the French and Indian War. And that's still a big part of that town. That's their thing. So we always were really connected to that point of history. I've always been connected to history. And in the East, everybody's connected to the Civil War because we all had relatives in the Civil War, most of us. And some of us in the Revolutionary War. And um, So I've always been connected with the ancestors in those ways, my study through of those different eras. Um, but in simple ways, I connect every day. You know, I smell something that... I put on hand cream and it makes it reminds me of my grandmother, the lanolin and the hand cream that she wore, Jurgen's hand lotion. Um, songs, I hear songs or uh, maybe food, a taste of food or of course just knitting or whatever. Um, when I knit or when I'm kneading bread dough, I see my grandmother's hands instead of mine. They're starting to look more like my grandmother's hands, but it's just a connection that we have that way. Um, in a more um, uh, literal way, I have mentioned before that I do dream about dead people all the time. They're in my dreams, and mostly a lot of them are relatives. Um, they're not necessarily, I don't know how much connection they're doing with me. They're not always speaking to me, but they're, but they're there in whatever I'm doing. They're, they're very much there. They're mostly just there. Uh, they don't really talk to me usually, or even interact in what I'm doing in the dream, but they're there. They're very much physically there. They're not um, that I'm wishing they were there. I sometimes am annoyed that they are there because <laughs> I say, you know, what do you want? Why don't you talk to me if you want to be there? So anyway, um, very connected, very connected with um, my ancestors and all the people that have come before me in a lot of ways. Number seven, do you prefer to do magic with others or by yourself? Well, I, uh, as far as like spell work and things, mostly by myself. I do a few things with my husband. I will do a few things with if for group. You know, I've done a few group uh, spells. Um, but most of the time, so I'm solitary. Most of the time, that kind of thing is very personal to me. And I do it myself. Um, as far as ritual goes, I always just did ritual with my husband. Until several years ago, we started going to a public ritual and locally, and it was really lovely. And I, I did we did that for several years, and oh, I miss it. They don't do it anymore. The woman who was in charge of that just stopped doing it, and I really miss it. That was a very magical experience. It was it was just so. It was lovely, and it almost, it didn't cause me to cease doing rituals. I, st I still do, but we don't, like we did, you know, we used to never really miss a ritual, and that was such an important part of what we did. And I just say, I'm, I was kind of let down by the fact that that ended. I'd like to have that experience again. Um, number eight, do you feel there is only one type of meditation? Um, no, of course not. And I was listening to a few other people respond to this, and they were all talking about a lot of other ways they meditate, which I agree with all of them. Um, you know, at the beach or watching the tide, watching the, you know, the tide coming in and the waves, and or uh, listening to music, you know, those kind of things. I'm not a traditional, I don't traditionally meditate in a traditional way. I mentioned this in my last video. Um, in a way, I think I did, that I don't block things out and have nothing to meditate. For me, it is more like listening to. Like I, I explained how it was that I found Little Bird in the first place out in the yard, um, sitting quietly, just sitting quietly alone, listening, tuning into the call of the birds is how I found him in the first place. I talk about, you know, tuning in, looking, noticing what's around me. Those, that's a form of meditation for me. Um, it's a way that I feel centered, why I feel grounded, by becoming aware of what is around me in a quiet way, in a quiet way, if that makes sense, in a quiet way. Um, what is your favorite flower and why? I love this question because I really do love flowers, and if you would ask me, do you love flowers? Oh, yes, of course I love them. 
But then I got to thinking about it, and I, I really don't have a favorite, but then I started to think, oh, of things I did not like, I was sort of oh, horrified in a way at myself that I could even say, well, I really don't like that about flowers, but I'm kind of, I kind of mean it. <laughs> um, I don't like flowers with artificial colors. You know what I'm talking about. You go into the grocery store, and there's a floral section in the grocery store, and a lot of those flowers have the most god-awful shades you've ever seen in your life. Like they're they're dyed. They're not yeah, they're not real. They're like they're horrible, very artificial looking colors. Which I really have a distaste for. I do not like I'm very suspicious of roses who are, do not have this do not smell like roses. You know, they have improved on all these roses so that they're more glorious and they're they repel insects and their blooms last ten times long longer, but they do not smell like roses. I wouldn't want anything to do with them. I dislike, in a big way, formal beds like you see around here. I don't know what it's like where you live, but around here it's like when you're going into a shopping center, like out on the intersection, you know, or, or in front of a bank or those kind of situations where all of the flowers are like, here's the real red, blue flowers and then white flowers and then red flowers, all in or little sections, everything, you know, exactly the same in little rows and little colors. This is the blue, this is the pink, this is the... I really don't like that. I want to go in there and mess it all up. <laughs> so I guess I do have some uh, dislikes, which are a little horrifying even to me. But my favorites, I do have some favorite flowers, and those are mostly connected to some kind of a memory. That's how they're really special to me, like for instance, daisies, you know, daisies was my wedding flower. And the reason I had daisies as a wedding flower is when I was a little girl, we used to make chains of daisies and do he loves me, he loves me not out of daisies. And that was just, you know, sit and do all kinds of things with daisies. I was so connected with daisies. As a bride, I, that's what I had. Um, lilacs, my grandmother had a beautiful lilac bush and I love the, I love them and I can't really grow them here in this climate. And, Daffodils, which we don't see a lot of either. Um, I have a lot of memories of childhood with daffodils. Peonies and dahlias that were given with my grandmother. Um, roses. Um, buttercups. We used to hold the buttercups. I sit and pick them and hold them under our chin to see if we were sweet as butter. Um, sunflowers, I just think are the happiest flower that's ever lived. They just dance. They dance and uh, dandelions. Oh, I love dandelions and they're not a weed and I want people to stop treating them as a weed. They're not a weed at all. <laughs> they're a flower. They are a herb. They are a herb. We use them in cooking. We use them in all kinds of things in, in ointments and salves and they're lovely. And stop calling them weeds because they're not. Number 10. Have you? Lily. This is a dog in here that's... Lily, come on. Go lay down. This is a... Uh, let's see, where am I? Have you tried a new... Okay, number 10. Have you tried a new form of divination this year? It's one of my goals. I'm working, working, trying to learn something new. Um, I don't really want to say what it is in case I don't learn it, but I have a feeling a lot of people are working on the same thing. So that's going to be exciting when we all come out in... <laughs> by the end of the year with all videos on the same new divination form, but I think we're on the same track. A lot of us, <laughs> which would be really fun. Okay. Number 11, what's your favorite way to connect to the elements? I wasn't sure what she meant by this. And I went back and listened to her video and she's telling us all at once how she connects all at once to the, to them. Well, of course, my number one way would be on the beach, you know, like I'm there all day in the sun and the wind and the sand under my feet and I like to stay and have a fire, a nice fire pit in the evening in the water and the difference between uh, here particularly in California, you know, it goes from hot, hot, nice, warm, balmy days to nice, cold, <laughs> pretty cold water and the cold uh, night, you really need that fire a lot of times. Most of the summer you need that fire if you're right up against the, the, um, oh shit, Lily, Lily. Cut it. Cut it out. <sighs> okay. Uh, oh, again, another one is sitting out um, at night, sitting out in the night, watching the stars. We do this a lot when they're camping around a fire. 
you know, sitting, talking, telling stories, whatever. Feet in the grass. A lot of times, bare feet in the grass. Looking at the sky. A little fire pit going on in the middle there. Um, also, uh, skinny dipping in my pool in the night. Oh, I love that. Under the stars. That's just one of the greatest, greatest things. Excuse me one minute. I was just taking a drink. I was just taking a drink of my wine. We'll look down the next question. Just a minute. <laughs> look down at the next question. It says, number 12, tea or coffee? And I had to laugh because I almost said wine, but no. <laughs> I do like both tea and coffee, um, but I drink tea all the time. Tea is my regular drink. I like it probably better. I drink hot tea all the, all morning and I drink hot tea at night again before I go to bed. I drink iced tea all afternoon <laughs> with a break in there for, for some wine. I really, really love tea a lot. Different kinds. Mostly black tea. I'm a black tea person. Black tea person. Okay. Twitch it. Who is under there? I'm being attacked by cats. I'm not sure why I'm doing this. Okay, number 13. Do you come from a witchy family? And do you feel the bloodline is important or does it matter? Well, um, you know, I consider witches to be my family. A family. You know, they're not my blood family. But I feel this connection with other witches. And I feel a bloodline, a bloodline with them that we create. We create this bloodline, right? Um, it's a little hard for me to explain but I do know um, we create families within the SCA all the time so you know like there'll be a knight and he'll have um, he'll have his uh, squires and then his squire and there's like a hierarchy there's like a, a family a generation of you know and every time there's a knighting they pass on some of the chain or something from the lineage goes they always ask for the lineage and this is a from where did the who had the chain before who had the chain before i got it from this person who got it from this person who got it from this person who got it from this person that's a very common uh way of thinking in my little medieval group so when i'm thinking about it in the pagan group or in the witchy community particularly i think we sort of share a lineage of sort just the same way that we have a bloodline that we of our own creation we consider ourselves to be uh sisters and brothers of for whatever reason in whatever whatever way we wish um a connection that's is not as of course the same as family connection in my own family i don't know i don't know and i have said this again in in some of my other videos that there very well might have been some witches when i look back at some of my you know grandmother great grandmother particularly uh, maybe some ants, great ants. They really, now that I see what I'm looking at, now what I'm looking at, they very well could have been, but I'm not sure. Um, I do know, you know, my father is a mason, was a mason. His father was a ma his father and his father before, they were masons. Um, my grandmother, of course, Eastern Star. Um, now, that's not anything to do with witchcraft, but some people think it does. And it doesn't really, that's not the point I, I'm using in making the comparison. What I'm saying is, I wasn't even sure what that was until, you know, when, when my father was old and my father was coming to live with me, we started getting his magazines, his subscription to the magazines in, in the mail, and we started getting taking a whole new interest in the Order of the Masons and things that I just never knew before. Of course... I've seen the same movies and read the same books as you, so, you know, there's some rumors about Masons, but, which may or may not be true, but whatever reason, there's a lot of secretness in uh, those fraternal orders, right? So, um, same kind of things yeah, that you don't know. You know, I just considered it, you know, he was just going off in whatever time to go to the thing. I, you know, I don't think, you don't think what he's doing. I The same thing with my aunts and my grandmothers when I'm thinking about witches, I wasn't sure what they were doing. <laughs> I, I just, I didn't, I didn't question it. So it's hard to say. It's hard to say. But some of those old ladies in some of those parlors full of, you know, crammed with knickknacks and African violets and little bottles of tinctures up in the cupboard and, you know, all the herbs hanging around and who knows? 
<laughs> I like to think yes. I like to think yes. Okay, number 14. List three of your favorite YouTube channels. Well, you can imagine, I hate this question. And I hate it for the same reason that a lot of people hate it. <laughs> because a lot of people hate to choose. And I really don't, I don't like to choose either. And also if you choose and you don't mention somebody, they might get the feelings hurt. And, you know, and... I just don't like to do that. But if I have to list three, that's the question, and I agree to do it. I will list three. And I, therefore, I do have to say, though, the other reason I hate the question is so many of my favorites are gone. <laughs> my all-time favorites, people that I just, you know... <laughs> okay, <laughs> this is kind of a comedy. Okay, now we have... This is Feswig walking across the table here. Feswig. Um, Fezzy, Fezzy. So many of my favorites are gone, and I I really mourned them when they left. I I still am mourning some of them. That I felt such a connection with people that are just gone and stopped making videos, and it just it took a part of my heart with it when it went so I don't want to call another favorite for fear that they might go too but I do have three that I can talk about that I think are really worthy of talking about that I want to mention and the first one is Madame Pamita Madame Pamita is a oh her parlor of wonders she's a hoodoo uh, priestess I imagine I think she's here based in Los Angeles I'm not sure I found her channel by accident I don't watch it all the time. I watch it. I've only watched it, you know, occasionally. But I, she's very, I, I, it's very interesting. If I'm looking around for something interesting to watch, I can really want in a video, a really good video, I can always go to Madame Pamita. And I can learn something new. It's a little, some of it's a little different than I do. And some of it I've adopted some of her, adopted some of her uh, ideas, some of her ideas. So that would be one. The second one would be Arwen. Um, and not for the reason you think. I mean, you think, oh, Arwen, yes, Arwen is a is a, an expert, a tarot expert, of course. Everybody knows. And she's very generous with sharing her knowledge of tarot. And, and I do love that. I love the tarot, and I do love hearing about the tarot, and I love listening to her tarotscapes, which I just actually found which is kind of funny because I used to give away when I started my channel, I mean my, um, when I was starting my Burning the Crone website, I started, and my, and also my uh, Facebook page, I was trying to get attention to it, so I was offering free tarot scopes every week, and um, I did it for, you know, I don't know how many months, maybe six months, five or six months, and, um, it was a lot of work, <laughs> and the way I did it, it was a little, it was a little different than the way she does. And now that I see her doing it, I'm, she's been doing it longer than me. I just haven't, I just haven't um, watched her channels per, before. I just, I'm rather new coming to her channels, and I think it's because she's a tarot reader, and well, I know she was really well, well respected. I didn't really have a reason to go and listen to somebody reading tarot or giving me tarotscape I thought at the time now I think differently I think you can always learn something and I love it but that's still not why I like her <laughs> I just like she's comfortable I like listening to her I like she's funny she's got a very funny delivery she's she's funny she's she's animated she makes faces like I do, like she's very expressive with her delivery. I, she's interesting to watch. She's very interesting to watch. Um, very upbeat most of the time, and I really appreciate that because I don't need to be depressed by listening to somebody be depressed. I don't know. There's just something very comfortable, and I and I'm very, I'm very um, sorry that I missed her for so long. So I would say Arwen. And finally, I have to say, the Lady Graham Dancer, and I'm just going to say that because well, I love her so much, and I don't, uh, even though I'm a little mad at her right now, <laughs> I'm 
I'm a little mad, and you uh, give me some hate because you know I shouldn't be mad at her, but I love her videos. I love watching her videos. I love watching her little, um, you know, updates and good mornings and the, from the with her kids and see her dogs and see, you know all the stuff that's going on in her life. I love it, and I especially love her little videos. She's so helpful with the videos that she puts up, and I feel she's you know hasn't been. I've missed her. She's been really caught up in doing some of these other things she's doing and in these long chats with other people and I, and I I understand and I think that's really fun to do the chats but I just I find it a little overstimulating for me to watch too long of those things so I anyway I would I can only take it in small doses and that's just me um, but I just miss her I miss her videos a lot I just think she's really cool and I really like her. So, I had to say it. <laughs> I had to say it. So, I'm going to put her on the list. I'm putting her on the list. Okay. Number 15. What is your favorite witchy book? Well, I don't have a favorite book. Again, that's like sort of picking your favorite children. And some of the books that have been my favorites are not my favorites so much anymore. And I don't know. I just like books, you know, for whatever. I like reference books a lot. Um. The one book here I wanted to share because I thought this was a good book and I could share this one. This is my one of my favorites right now. And here it is. It's called um, The Complete Guide to Crystal Chakra Healing. Crystal Chakra Healing by Philip Permit. And um, chakras are something that's still kind of new to me. Um, you know, I'm really interested in stones, of course, and their in crystals and their um, use. But I really like this book because this is really a user-friendly, very user, it's easy to think of, very user-friendly book. It's divided in the sections. In the beginning, in this part, in most of the book, it talks about the chakras. And in every one, it has a, a section here like, well, here I'm in you, healing the solar plexus chakra. Okay, so it talks about where the, the third chakra being the solar plexus, where it's located, and when it's working properly, when it's healthy, um, what, you know, what, how it helps you, okay? But then it says, um, what happens, here we have how to tell, then here on every, in every one of the sections, there's a little chart here, how to tell if your solar plexus chakra is out of balance. And here it says, um, you could lead to, a, yeah, whatever. Problem in the solar plexus often related to stress, typical symptoms, lack of concentration, failing memory, falling asleep during the day, insomnia, digestive orders, eating disorders, stress-related skin conditions. Okay, gives you information like that, and then it tells you, goes on to tell you what kind of um, crystals are good to heal that, and all of the properties, all of the properties and descriptions about those crystals. And how they heal, what they do, what 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 particular thing they might do for the chakras. Okay, it has that on every for every chakra. And then at the end of the book, um, healing techniques. There's a section on healing techniques, which talks about um, your space for healing, different kind of exercises to diagnose the problems that you might be having. Um, placing how you do crystal grids, you know those kind of things. Um, Activating the crystals, um, self-healing treatments, and then further, further talking more about um, working, you know, with as a career with crystals. Which I have one friend who does work um, as a use in career crystal healing in her career. She's a nurse, and I think she uses this. And um, also, people with psychics using shock uh, crystals, chakra healing. Okay. And a lot of other things. Anyway, it's just a nifty little book. It's a really good. It falls into the. Um, <laughs> it falls into the category of being a little reference book, which I do love reference books. But it also is an interesting. Lots of pictures. Lots of good descriptors. Lots of you know any uh, buddy can use. So that's my new. Right now, my favorite book. Okay, number sixteen. I'm almost done. Number sixteen. An herb you haven't worked with yet. Well, for me, I was trying to think of what I haven't worked with, and I don't even know because I have such a lot of herbs, especially in my cabinet that I use for um, incenses and 
and things like that. Um, so for me, it wasn't so much of finding one that I haven't worked with yet. It's finding ones that I wish to work with in, in, in a way diff other than the way I've been traditionally working with it. Like if it's a an herb that I um, maybe just use for uh, magical purposes. Well, is this an herb that I can cook with? Is this an herb I can brew with? Um, um, you know, are there any healing properties? Can I use this in a salve or an ointment? You know, so I'm looking for all kinds of uses, all the uses for the herbs, rather than just generalized usage. Just like I like these for this, and this for this, and this for this. And I became really excited about that and really interested in that when I started paying attention to things that were popping up in my yard. <laughs> you know, we had a couple years, the last two years in our guard in our home here in California, we've had two unusually wet winters where we've had rain, especially this last winter, we had, but we have had more rain than we have had in years and years. And all kinds of things were popping up in the spring in the yard. And things that I were, was learning for the first time that these are things I could cook with, or these are things that, you know, whatever, you could use them for different things. So um, I'm starting to look elsewhere. So I'm getting out my books, which I've had a lot of these books for a long time. And looking at some of these herbal books and looking at what else can I do with these herbs that I already have. Okay, and finally, the last one. What are your goals for next year? Well, next year. Okay, well, don't wish my life away. <laughs> when you get old, you don't want to talk about next year. You're still talking about next week. You know, you want to get to next week. I want to get to next week. I want to get to now. I'm working on now. I've spent a lot of time, a lot of part of my life in um, trying to have goals for the future, goals for the future. I need to turn myself into right now and what can I accomplish today? What can I accomplish tomorrow? Okay, so that's sort of where my head is. Um, it's only May, right? We still have a long time of the year to go. But that being said, that being said, I will give you this, Raymond Flower. I do, am working on a book and I do hope to have that published next year. <laughs> so I do have goals like everybody else. So I'm being a little hard on you. Anyway, this was kind of a fun tag. A little different. She always comes up with some good, good questions. So, um, if you're interested in joining the tag, um, Ravenflower, um, it's it's her tag. It's not mine, but anyway, I'm sure she wouldn't mind if I say tag. You're tagged. So, go ahead and I'd love to hear your answers. If you have some responses, I'd love to hear them. If you have some love to give me, give me some love. <laughs> of course, you're welcome to give me hate too, but I prefer love. Okay? Anyway, thank you so much for listening. Thank you for coming to my channel. I am Rebecca, the good wife, and I wish you blessings. Cheers. <laughs>